In today's Nonsense Wars production, I'm going to follow up on the apparently popular Vacuum Engines episode by looking at another design. When I first found out about LEGO Air Engines, I wanted to design a minimally viable implementation, and we originally tried to make something with an oscillating cylinder. Trouble with that build prompted all of Jay's weird and wonderful concepts that we showed before. Afterward, I lost interest for some time, but I finally got around to revisiting and covering my original idea. This is close to the smallest and simplest air engine I managed to conceive. It uses just about 100 parts, though I could probably still trim a few here and there. It has a single conventional piston with a conventional crank and connecting rod. It has a flappy valve driven through some rockers by a cam. I originally placed the cam on the main crankshaft, but I moved it in order to add a set of gears. I wanted to empirically determine the best timing for this engine. I started with the valve opening fully in the middle of a stroke, and I gradually walked the timing backward and forward. I used the speed computer to measure crankshaft RPM at each setting, uh, using the speed as a proxy for power. The geometry of the valve linkage means that it doesn't open and close symmetrically, so I tested the engine in both directions. In the direction where the valve opens faster, the engine ran at 400 RPM with the base timing. Retarding the timing, opening the valve later, reduced the speed to 380 RPM, and advancing the timing, uh, opening the valve earlier, Increase the speed to 440 RPM. I could only retard or advance the timing by one gear tooth, about 20 degrees, before the engine stopped working altogether. In the direction where the valve closes faster, the engine ran at 460 RPM with the base timing. Retarding the timing by one gear tooth already didn't work, but advancing the timing increased the speed like before. 520 RPM after one tooth, 580 RPM after two teeth, and 620 RPM after three teeth. That being said, it did become hard to start with three teeth of advancement, and it stopped working with the fourth. I will admit that I did not run these tests too rigorously. My inlet did not seal that well due to wear on the vacuum nozzle, and I did not run configurations multiple times due to concern about the vacuum overheating. Still, I saw results within the same ballpark, and even a clear trend, a slower open and quicker close toward the beginning of the stroke gives the best performance for this design. A couple more thoughts on the construction. I built the cylinder walls with five high bricks and panels in order to minimize friction on the piston. I also made the head of the piston out of two by four Technic plates. Uh, since the engine does not have an exhaust valve, it needs some blowback to actually run, at least with my vacuum. The strength of your vacuum may have some impact on the performance or even the functionality. Finally, since this is a short video, I'm going to show you approximately how to build it. Perhaps I will make a proper set of instructions in the future as well. Given what I just said, you may have to time it differently on different vacuums, or it may not work at all. Do leave a comment if you give it a go, but on that note, this is the end of the commentary, so have a nice day.